What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm actually bringing you guys a deck profile that I kind of hinted at in a previous video. So previously I did Scareclaw Fiendsmith which is an absolutely insane deck but I know that the Fiendsmith engine is a little bit pricey so a more budget version of this is actually playing the adventure package and I wanted to show you guys an adventure Scareclaw deck profile for you guys. So with that being said make sure to like and subscribe if you guys do enjoy and let's get right into today's video. So first things first of course is we're playing three of the Rykart. Rykart is absolutely insane this card is crazy uh, one of the most important cards in the deck of course so we're playing three of this. We're also playing uh, three Acro here, three Balone, and two Astra. So I decided to max out on these two, but only play the two Astra, just because I think Astra is the worst one, in my opinion. Uh, it gives your tryhard essentially more attacks based off how many defense position monsters there is. But the problem with this one is it doesn't give you additional attacks. It can attack up to the number of defense position monsters. So if you have one defense position monster, it's like... It, where is it? it? It can still only attack a single time, so it doesn't really make that much of a difference. Balone over here does piercing damage, which is really good. It synergizes really well because Tryhard puts everything in defense position, so this kind of helps you OTK and push for damage as well. I like these ratios. I wouldn't change these ratios up at all. Now for the uh, honorary Scareclaw monster, we're playing two Fenrir, three Fenrir, I should say, as well as two of the Scareclaw Kashira. So Fenrir is insane in this deck because it searches Scareclaw Kashira, which is crazy because this is a searcher for a Scareclaw card. This, of course, can attack while it's in defense position, uh, puts a lot of pressure on the board as well. It makes it so that when your Scareclaw or your Kashira monsters attack, it kind of negates the effects of the monsters it's attacking. So it's gonna, if any of these attack, if your try hard attacks, it kind of stops them. And then same thing with Fenrir and uh, itself, obviously, right? So I like playing two of this. I think two is really good because in this deck specifically, you can banish like Scareclaw cards. In Kashira, you can only banish Kashira cards, which you don't really want to do anyways. But in this one, you have so many different targets to banish. And then it's a good side out target as well. If you're going second, you always side one out as well. But the fact that it's searchable off of Fenrir is really good. And then lastly, just one visa Starfrost. Starfrost is really good just as a tuner and it's a card that you kind of need in this deck so the one visa star frost this is pretty standard like if you guys have ever played scareclaw this is not something that i think people change up maybe the one scareclaw kashira but other than that it's pretty standard we are playing two rake phobia as well as two arrival i really like two and two you have to be playing two of this this one is arguable you can play one of but i like having a grind game so the this is really good in the grind game also it's an easy side out target the thing is with this deck is you really want it to be able to side really easily as well going second because uh, a lot of this engine luckily enough is side outable if that makes sense so you can side one of these out speaking of siding out going second we're also playing one Sclash and one twin saw so these are the two cards that you want to end on a lot of the time these two are really really powerful but again going second you can always side them out of course the reason we're playing just one on one is because you don't want to draw these cards these are cards you want to search in your combo versus the other cards of course you're going to want to open right so the two traps here and that's kind of it for just a scareclaw package and now we have a lot of non-engine actually specifically we have the adventure package so this is kind of what makes the deck really good is because none of your monsters really have a normal summon effect that you care about so much so that's why uh the adventure package is really good so three water enchantress two right one fateful one draco back and one wandering griffin rider so the reason we're on two right is because water enchantress can get this back from the graveyard so it's not the end of the world i like just playing two and on top of that if you're playing three i mean playing three is not wrong per se but I just like these ratios. I think they're the perfect ratios. On top of that, this can be an extender for you if you need to link climb, which is really nice. And that synergizes well with this deck because it, again, it, it is a link based deck at the end of the day. So there's a lot of really cool things for you. And the fact that you're putting up an Omni Negate before you really have to commit to all of your plays is really, really good because you're not losing to Nibiru. Not that Nibiru is really great in this format anyways, but it's just something that this deck always struggled with and it doesn't really struggle with anymore with this package, right? So I really, really like this package over here instead of the Fiendsmith package, which this is a lot more affordable, but kind of does the same thing where you're just setting up an Omni Negate, which is really nice right so uh that's the adventure package over here and then lastly we're just going to end off on some non-engine so three of the ash three imperm and three droll honestly i just think these are the best hand traps of today's format they're very generic ash and imperm are pretty much good into everything in today's format and i think droll is really really good in today's format as well now you guys could argue why you're not playing fualos i don't have fualos but on top of that for a deck like this one that plays a lot of engine and not a lot of non-engine playing fualos is not necessarily great of course you could also argue that just activating fuallos means your opponent's gonna stop. So even if they like, if you don't have anything to draw, it doesn't really matter that you have nothing to draw because you're just scaring your opponent or kind of like bluffing. And again, if you guys have fuallos, by all means, please play it. I just don't have the card and I just think Droll is absolutely insane in today's format. I really like these nine cards over here. 40 cards in the main deck on the dot. I wouldn't play more than 40 just because you need to see your names. So yeah, I, I wouldn't play more than 40 in, in, in the main deck. Moving on to the extra deck though, this is a lot more standard. So three of the light heart and two of the try heart. I wouldn't play more more than two of this you're winning the game most of the time after you're making the second one the first one is kind of just what you want to end on the second 
second one is kind of like okay they outed my first one but i can go for game at the end of the day this is kind of like a pseudo tower like monster where it's an unaffected by the card effects of defense position monsters and this is going to put everything in defense position so really it's only affected by link monsters but you have ways around that as well so two try hearts all you're going to need three of this this is not a once per turn which is crazy and it's an extender for you as well as a starter so that's why it's really really powerful so three and two one vicious astral out as well very easy to make in this deck and turns three you want to make you usually set this up so turns three you can just make it an otk so astral is good one cross sheep of course like this into into this is just so insane so cross sheep of course one awesome because all of your monsters are earth in the main deck but then we're also playing one dark because lightheart is a dark and then uh, i think right card specifically is a dark as well so you can make this really good into some matchups as well helps you just link climb essentially one ip one sp one unicorn unicorn could be like nightmare phoenix or something like that but i like unicorn just because you're not always going ip into unicorn what you can do if you're going second is you can go like dark or awesome into unicorn and then uh it kind of is like a break breaker for you and then on top of that unicorn can go into access code talker and make it 5300 which is really nice now of course you can always go try hard into access code as well but just another link three that i think was very very powerful that you can make in this deck then we're playing one underworld goddess gener generically just a really good card and because of all the scare claws they all summon themselves out as bodies so it's very easy to get four bodies on the board and you can just kind of break your opponent's boards with this and then lastly we're playing the one uh chenging so the reason we're playing chenging is it's level 10 synchro so visa starfrost is a six plus any four is essentially level 10 and uh, you're able to make this again just helps you push for game so i like the chenging and the extra deck as well it doesn't come up super often but when it does it, it can be very very clutch in this deck so 15 cards of course and then lastly we for our side deck here i'm, I'm gonna say this side deck is always gonna be up to personal preference i say this in all my videos if you're going to all locals and your locals all combo players side for combo if you're going to locals all back row players side for back row this is kind of like a generic side deck that kind of covers a little bit of everything so uh yeah again just use it as a skeleton but of course build it how you guys want it's all up to personal preference but one card that i absolutely love in this deck is three blink out so blink out specifically works so well in this deck because uh what it reads is you target a link monster on the field return it to the extra deck then you can special summon one of the monsters from your graveyard that was used essentially as a link material now why is this good well it's good for a couple reasons first things first is if you summon like light heart and for some reason they have imperm but you know you need the field spell right you can actually blink out the light heart this is still going to resolve because the imperm is going to miss and you're going to be able to summon back the monster that made the light heart so the nice thing is it kind of protects you but on top of it protecting you remember how i said that the try heart has an effect where it puts everything in defense position and it's unaffected by defense position monsters obviously when your opponent summons a link monster you can't put that in defense so what you can do is if you're going first and you set up a try heart with a blink out set this essentially breaks that because they'll go into like a link two or a link three whatever they go into you blink it out so it just pretty much compulses it and then your opponent's kind of stuck with no monster so blink out really works because it protects your monsters um and then it also helps you extend as well and in general it's just a breaker like at the end of the day it's just a breaker so it's good going first good going second then we're playing one harpies two lightning storm for back row we're playing three evenly matched this is also for back row but it's also really good for front row as well the reason i'm signing so heavily for back row is because this deck can't really do anything to back row decks unfortunately it doesn't really have any main deck outs like in the main deck you have droll you have ash you have imperm for combo decks you also have fenrir which helps break a lot of monster boards this of course even is good against monster boards as well but it's really good against back row as well and then uh for going first three d barrier and then three solemn judgment uh, i just think these are the best going first cards in the game right now that you can play but again this is just a template for you guys to use you guys don't have to use this exact same one i just think it's a good side deck that kind of covers a little bit of every matchup so that's it for the deck profile guys 40 cards 15 15 you know how it is again if you guys don't have access to the fiendsmith engine i think the adventure engine makes a lot of sense in scareclaw this deck is very very consistent it puts so many bodies out on the board you have extenders in the main deck you have negates in the main deck with the adventure engine the fact that this deck can play fenrir really reliably is really good as well so thank you guys all for watching i appreciate every single one of you thank you cameraman for being the best cameraman on youtube thank you guys all for watching and with that spank out peace